Good evening. This is the May 10th, uh, 2005 regularly scheduled school board business business meeting. We'd all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Anyone? Okay. Approval of April school board meetings minutes. Um, we have A, the regular school board meeting held April 12th, and a special meeting that was held on April 26th. Are there any uh, adjustments or comments to, on the, those minutes? All in favor of accepting the minutes? Thanks. We have our uh, high school and middle school representatives. Come on up. <laughs> So we're in the home stretch of school, the high school, which means we'll be saying goodbye to the seniors. Uh, their last day of classes is on Friday, and they'll be heading into their senior transition projects. Um, we have this big board up where the main office used to be. It has a map of the country, and the seniors uh, put little pins on with the college where they're going. So everyone's, everyone's kind of feeling good about the seniors, you know, they're done with done with high school and they're going off to bigger and better things. Um, as far as construction, the cafeteria has been opened. We had a big wall in there for a while. That's down. There's now a lot more space, a lot of light. There's another big doorway out to the pool area. Uh, the students love it. The vending machines have come back in there from where they were in the lobby. Uh, and now there's the art show is being displayed in the lobby. Uh, there are paintings, sculptures, photographs from students in this high school. Uh, so that's really nice. Makes, a, makes the lobby look a lot nicer. Uh, and also in that lobby there's the big board that has the display for the play that is coming up, which as we've told you before is Damn Yankees. Um, it opens Memorial Day weekend and it will be showing at the end of May and into the beginning of June, I believe. So people are looking forward to that. Uh, spring sports are going well. Looking forward to more state championships, hopefully. Uh, we recently had an award ceremony. Every year we have an uh, academic award ceremony, which is held after school, and students who receive them get invited to it. Um, but this, we had a sort of a recognition ceremony during school in which um, students were recognized from everything to uh, participation in the hockey team state championship to um, one student, one student who was instrumental in uh, making the dances happen, to a student who was a semifinalist in a statewide writing contest. So that was nice. A lot of students got recognition for things that they don't normally. Uh, and uh, everyone's awaiting the last edition of the school newspaper. Uh, the last one's always the favorite. They do uh, senior predictions where they predict what all the seniors are going to be doing when they grow up. So that's always funny. And uh, everyone's just looking forward to summer. Terrific. Thank you. Any questions? Thank will, you. Will you be also coming to our June meeting? Yes, I will. Oh. We have the middle school reps. Yes, here they are. As school winds down, middle school activities keep coming our way. The 8th grade recognition night is on June 9th. During the week of May 23rd, the whole 8th grade will be grooming trails for the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. The last dance for the 7th and 8th graders is on June 3rd. The 8th grade trip to Old Orchard Beach is on June 17th. 
Also, many of the eighth graders have been taking advantage of the beautiful weather and have been eating outside um, at lunchtime. The fifth grade team has been planning many wonderful activities for the last weeks of school. They will be taking field trips on the week of May 23rd to Fort Williams. The fifth grade will also be going on whale watches on either June 13th or June 15th. On June 17th, the fifth grade will voyage to Crescent Beach for their very first beach day. In addition to these field trips, they have also plans of exciting activities for at school too. They plan to have a fifth grade spelling bee with Mrs. Hutton as the bee master. As a closing activity for the math and science program, they're planning to have a float off and each child makes a boat and they say, see who can last the longest as they add paper clips. Last week, there were fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade band and chorus concerts. It was the first concert for the fifth graders and the last for the eighth. And that went really well and all the bands performed really well. In the next few weeks, there will be scoliosis screening also, many fundraising has been going on in the eighth grade to collect money for a present that's going to be given to the school from the eighth grade class. At Cape Elizabeth Middle School, there are 27 days left. Uh, the progress report cards went out on Friday, and our last day of school is June 20th. The seventh and eighth graders are uh, both going to Scarborough Beach for Beach Day on the 17th. As we speak, the sixth graders are probably cooking over an open fire at Chiwonki. They left yesterday morning and they are returning on Friday. Chiwonki is a hands-on experience. It is a camp that all the sixth graders go to every year. Um, for sports, the seventh and eighth grade girls and boys lacrosse teams had a game today against North Yarmouth Academy. The softball and baseball team uh, both played Lake Region today and uh, the track team is also doing well. The student council is uh, doing the finishing touches on Spirit Week. Spirit Week is next week, next week where every day is a different theme and the best four costumes in each grade wins a small prize. Uh, in gym, uh, our spring unit is archery and soccer. The fifth and sixth graders are having um, their final social at Steve Coast Amusement Park coming up. Um, the student council is in interviewed both the candidates for next year's principal opening. Mr. Steve Connolly was chosen for the position. Uh, some volunteers in eighth grade, uh, some volunteers in eighth grade students from Center to Dana's class are going over to Thomas Memorial Library to read to the younger children in Spanish for uh, a few days this month. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Apparently we have a special guest tonight. Pond Cove School Principal of the Day is here to make a report. Alyssa Mitchell was uh, this year's principal for a day, and I think it goes all the way through till midnight, so we got her to come here and give a report. <laughs> she's, she's so accomplished, she didn't even bring notes, and I have confidence that she can, can do this. But if she needs any advice, I'll be sitting right here. Why don't you tell us about your day? Um, today, the students in Pond Cove School could chew gum and wear hats, and could take their shoes off in their classrooms. Um, and, um, they could also use the swings that we couldn't use before, and, um, oh yeah, and we had a rest period after lunch where you could either, um, have a nap time, read, or draw, and, um, And I'd like to thank Mr. Eismeyer for making this all possible. <laughs> Alyssa, yeah. I understand that there was quite a bit of negotiating and consulting with your peers to come up with your um, platform for today. I really want to commend you on all that work leading up to today. Thank you. Speaking of negotiations, what do you think about a raise for your principal? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Tom. <laughs> Go ahead, Nancy. <laughs> uh. Hey, you can tell us what he said. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, and mentioned the negotiation part. This is the first time. I, Alyssa put a lot of work into this ahead of time, and she had uh, her own email, thanks to Gary Illinois. The first list of rules that caused a little stir. But Alyssa didn't mention the most controversial proposed change. Should I mention it? She wanted to have four square with anything goes. And there was just a, an outcry from kids and uh, students. So she backed off on that, and they had a good time. And I also want to thank her parents for raising such a great kid. It was really a terrific day. Thank you. Before we move on in the agenda, I'd like to take a moment to recognize some other special guests tonight. Um, I guess we'll start with Representative Connie Goldman, who's here to do some work tonight. And uh, if you'd stand up for a minute, uh, we're not ready to, do, we're going to save that. I just want to recognize you, Connie, um, at the moment. We also have with us our new superintendent, Alan Hawkins. And finally, our almost new um, principal for the middle school, which we'll be uh, voting on uh, later tonight, Steve Conley. Welcome all. Thank you. Communications, we have three scheduled, and, and if there's anything anyone else on the board has, um, they can add that. Um, Bob? Yes. Um, the first one was a letter from an organization called um, uh, School Match about uh, Cape Elizabeth being named to uh, as one of the school systems that is recognized as uh, for the What Parents Want Award. Um, there are about 16% of the schools in the country who are recognized for this award, and Cape Elizabeth is one of those. Um, that's um, one of 2,528 2, of the nation's 15,500 school districts. And it really is based on what parents want. And they tell this organization that, and they search for school systems that do it. So um, it's, a, it's an honor to be named and um, is something that not a lot of school districts are named to. Um, a second letter came and that was from uh, United Way thanking the Cape Elizabeth School District for its, um, its campaign, its help in the campaign this year. And I'll just mention a couple of sentences from it. Cape Elizabeth School District's contribution of $2,561 was critical to exceeding our campaign goal. Thanks to you and your employees, and uh, special thanks to the employee campaign manager, Mary Bruns. So thank you very much, Mary, and thank you to all the people in the district who helped to reach that goal. Uh, we all know those monies go to many of the organizations that help our kids, and that's, you know, some great stuff. Um, and the third item is that um, in your packets for the school board, um, there was a letter from Keith Weatherby. There was a question last time about why are coaching positions coming so late um, as we get into the season. And Keith sort of explained a couple of those situations and why they, they happened like they did. And uh, um, it has not been easy to get coaches, and that's been a problem um, across districts. Uh, this is not the first district I've been in where that's been a problem. So um, I just wanted to share that with you and have it in there. And I do not have other communications pieces, but other people might. Um, before I go to other board members um, and then come back to myself, we did receive a piece of good news today, although we don't have uh, very specific details on it. I believe it was Newsweek, Bob? Mm -hmm. Uh, we are the uh, <clears throat> we are in the list of their best schools um, for the year. Um, we are third in the state of Maine, preceded by Yarmouth, Bangor. Um, but I think that that's a uh, fantastic achievement in light of uh, the way things have been, and we'll be looking into the criteria and commenting on it further um, in the future. Anyone else, Trish? 
I just want to thank the music and the art department faculty and staff at the high school and the middle school in organizing Arts Week last week. Um, the display of student talent and hard work in the art exhibit and the choral and band concerts were just terrific. So thanks. I know there was a coordinated effort to kind of put all that together in one week. So I thought it was great. Elaine? No? Then we have one last item uh, that relates to myself. Um, I am stepping down as chairman of the personnel committee and I have appointed Elaine uh, to take my place for the balance of my term, which is uh, November. Um, I think Lord, Elaine has always had an interest in that area and is highly talented and it has uh, um, a great deal of interest and I'm sure she'll do a, uh, a superior, as always, job on that. The other item is that um, there will be a follow-up conference in Orono for sports done right and engaging the community. I've asked Rebecca Millett to join the team of Keith Weatherby, Sue Weatherby, and Scott Labby uh, to go to that. Um, she has expressed, uh, long expressed an interest in sports done right, and I've decided that uh, she should have the opportunity to explore that a little more formally. I think that's it for my communications, if there's nothing else. Okay, we'll move on. Comments from the public on non-agenda items? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll move on to recognition. And now, Connie, you can take center stage. Thank you very much. It's uh, such a pleasure to be back in this room again at a board meeting time. I'm here primarily because uh, one of the things that happens at the state legislative level is there are things called sentiments. They are actually um, documents, but they are drawn to for special purposes, and one of the special purposes would be any sports team that wins its championship at the state level. Um, I, since the town council was doing recognitions last month, I did in fact go to the town council meeting, and we had two state champion teams that merited uh, a special sentiment from the state legislature. Um, we had the girls' Nordic ski team, and we had the boys' uh, hockey team, and through some little glitch somewhere. The girls were there and we proceeded with them, but the boys apparently didn't get the message and they weren't there. So uh, in discussing this with Mary, I said, well, I'll come to the school board meeting. Um, it is a tradition here to do it with the town council, but I've always kind of thought we should do it at the school board meeting anyway. So I'll do it at the school board meeting and ask uh, Principal uh, Jeff Shedd to come, please, so I can officially hand this over. And I'm sorry to hear that I missed the somehow the your honors banquet or whatever recognition day but i'm sure you can take care of this i'll just read the sentiment and what the way this this is what it looks like and then i we have copies for each of the team members but the main one goes to to the school as i understand the process so what this says is be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing the following members of the Cape Elizabeth High School Boys Ice Hockey Team, and all of their names are on there, upon their winning the State Class B Ice Hockey Championship. And as I said, that's all signed, sealed, and now delivered, and each boy will have a copy for his own. I also want to thank you personally and to the board. Um, our principal came to the hearing that we held at the State Department on the learning results. We actually had many, 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 many hours on that issue. And, and um, Jeff's testimony was powerful and really got people's attention. And you have a pretty good <coughs> idea of what he was talking about because you've seen his letters and other documents. But I think it was very helpful and I'm very uh, optimistic that some real changes that will be beneficial to this district as well as obviously statewide will happen. So thank you very much. Thank you very sure. much. And before I leave, I have one other item. 
because sentiments come in more than one form and for more than one purpose. So <clears throat> I think I will just read this one and then I can hand it out. Be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, <clears throat> join in recognizing Nancy Hutton of South Portland, principal of Cape Elizabeth Middle School, on the occasion of her retirement. She has 35 years of educational service, with 25 of those years devoted to Cape Elizabeth, where she was a language arts teacher for 10 years and then served 15 years as principal. In addition, she has taught adolescent literature as an adjunct professor at the University of Southern Maine and has shared her expertise many times in workshops around the state. Ms. Hutton has served as a distinguished educator at the state level working on certification issues. In all these endeavors, Ms. Hutton has demonstrated the highest level of devotion to her students, to fellow educators, and to the vision of excellent education for all children. We extend our congratulations and best wishes on her retirement and be in order that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 122nd Legislature and the people of the state of Maine. I, I won't bore you with the speech, so thank you very much. I'm sure Connie was very instrumental in that, so thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to be able to do something like that. Thank you, Connie. And thank you, Nancy. <clears throat> Next item under recognition, um, there's several here. Um, High School Student Awards, Middle School Student Awards, Pond Cove Student Awards. Um, I'm going to go through these rather quickly. Um, this is always a delight. Um, we'll begin with Cape Elizabeth High School Student Honors. CEHS students have earned recognition for a number of accomplishments recently. They are Henry Kramer, first place winner, Bangor Symphony Orchestra School Concerto Competition. Henry will perform with the Bangor Symphony in May. Stephanie House, third place finisher in Bangor Symphony Orchestra High School Concerto Competition. Bethany Roy, Presidential Scholar Semifinalist. Um, of course, there are the boys varsity ice hockey team, state B class champ state, state class B champions once again. Um, there is the All-State Hockey Team, Jeff Crotu and Dan Rautenberg. The Girls Nordic Ski Team, Kate Barton, Claire Egan, Elise Moody Roberts, Erin Hatton, Mary Catherine Hubner, and Amanda Slack, State B, State Class B champions. Um, Nordic Ski Junior Olympians, Kate Barton, Elise Moody Roberts. The Principal's Award, Bethany Roy. Western Maine Conference Citizenship Awards, uh, Kelly Sch Skopinski and Corinne Earnshaw. Competitors in National Catholic Forensic League Speech Tournament in Milwaukee in May is Anna Moir and Gina Stevenson. All-State track team, Kevin Harrison. Long jump and triple jump state champion, Kevin Harrison. All-State band, Caitlin Becker, Anna Moir, uh, Kate Yoshua, I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, Mary-Kate Hubner, Jeff Witherell, Stephanie House, Tess Wiggums, Liam Sullivan, Oliver Coglin Wheel, and I need to catch my breath. All Eastern Band, Anna Moir. All State Jazz Band, Jeff Witherell, John Butterworth, Parker Marvin, Jeremy Falk. All State Chorus, Eliza, Eliza Wilcox. Perfect scores on National Latin Exam. Catherine, well, here we go again, I'm going to butcher this, Yoshua. Olivia Coglin Wheel. 
Charles Governale and Daniel Goldstein. Uh, Lucas Demi De Delahanty, semi-finalist, the journey into writing, a writing contest sponsored by Maine Community College System. Cape Elizabeth High School Theater Council, recipients of UPS Foundation grant in the amount of $10,910 to support the continuation of the theater program's community outreach efforts. And the Singers in the Voices of Hope concert sponsored by Seeds of Peace and George Mitchell Institute. Eliza Wilcox, Colin White Whitman, Beth O'Meara, Brooke Lambert, Libby Cummings, and Lauren Yuka Vasquez. And I apologize for that one too. Oh, okay. Having rehearsed the middle school recognition, I was just handed an updated one. Um, if so for the middle school, beginning with Joe Walansky and Rosie Hewitt, eighth grade students, Scala leader winners, Selected by the 8th grade team, they will be honored at a banquet in Augusta on May 19th, sponsored by the Maine Association of Middle-Level Educators and the New England League of Middle School Schools. Creative Capers, a writing contest sponsored by the Cape Elizabeth Arts Commission. Michael Long, 8th grade, first place winner, second year in a row. Nicole Alves, 8th grade, second place winner. Katie Moles, eighth grade, honored by the Maine State Legislature for community service efforts through the Girl Scouts of America. The entire seventh grade class for raising $2,000 for Project Smile. And all students, grades five to eight, for raising money to assist the December tsunami victims. Um, and people wonder why we're proud of our students and our faculty. We have we have another um, we have an event uh, that involved a student in uh, Pond Cove. Uh, first grader Michaela Thurlow loves helping others. When our class started raising money for tsunami survivors earlier this year, it really hit home for the seven-year-old girl who was born in Cambodia. They are from my part of the world. I want to help so they can make playgrounds, villages, and buy more food and homes, Michaela said. Greg and Angelina Thurlow adopted Michaela when she was a baby. A mother who is also a native of Cambodia says they realized very early on that their daughter was special. She started according to what we were, according to what we were singing and try to mimic us. And from then on, she started singing, her mother said. Michaela is using her gift to help tsunami victims rebuild their lives. She recorded a special song called A Wave of Relief, written by Joe Alberti, the director of the Children's Theater of Maine. It also gave Michaela a, change, a chance to sing in her native language, Keimer. Michaela has sold nearly 200 CDs with all of the proceeds going to Save the Children Relief Fund. The first grader has taken her tsunami relief efforts on the road. Recently, students in Berwick purchased more than $500 of Michaela's CD after she sang at their school. She hopes to perform at other schools in southern Maine. And... Uh, I believe this was reported uh, by Channel 6 um, under the Doing for Others category. And I'd like to extend my personal congratulations and thanks to Michaela as well as on behalf of the entire board. And finally, Trish has a few words to say about the Seaf Spelling Bee and other events. I just wanted to publicly thank C for their efforts on the Spelling Bee, which took place on April 28th. Um, the Spelling Bee is a great community building event and a very successful fundraiser. I think the estimates at this point um, are that the event generated about $10,500 for our school. And I also wanted to thank um, the teachers and the school department staff who were good sports and participated on the teams and did it with great style in their costumes. Um, and also just a general thanks to all those community members who participated on teams or who sponsored the teams. 
all, all, everyone involved in the event and all those who went really have assisted the schools in maintaining or continuing to maintain our tradition of excellence. So thank you. <coughs> thank you, Trish. On to the superintendent's report. Bob? Uh, yes, we've already mentioned the uh, team going on Wednesday, May 25th to, uh, to the Sports Done Right conference, and they will hopefully bring back a, a plan as to where we go from there. Um, the next issue of the view um, is just about ready to go to press. Um, it should be finally put together this weekend and, and uh, go to the printer and be out um, about a week later. Um, in your packet was an, uh, some information from Sue Gendron, the Commissioner of Education, on the um, mid-course corrections for the learning results uh, implementation. And uh, probably the top page, the, um, the front and back, um, best summarize it. And really, it falls into three different categories. And I think Connie is gone, but we should be thanking Connie for a good part of this, because she was the uh, driving force. And according to the commissioner, the person who the Education Committee was looking to for advice on what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. And the three areas that um, she was working on were, number one, to simplify the system, number two, to slow down the system, and three, to provide support for the school systems for, as they go through the process. And that's exactly what is being proposed as mid-course corrections. You can read the details yourself, but um, our thanks to Connie and our thanks to Sue Gendron for following through on that. Um, I'm sorry, Bob, can you, yes. um, is this going to re be required to be approved by the legislator? Uh, yes, it will have to go to the entire legislature, but that is the recommendation from the Education Committee going to the legislature at this point. Okay, thanks. Um, a couple of others. Um, our budget did pass last evening. Um, the Town Council held a meeting and uh, passed our budget as it was um, finally proposed from us to them. Um, and Kevin, I didn't know if you wanted to make some comments here or not, or do yes. you want to wait till after? No, I, th I think I'll make the comments now. They're, they're probably more appropriate. Um, I've noticed over the past few days people discussing um, uh, the school budget, the, uh, the laptop request, um, various resolutions, et cetera, et cetera. And one piece of information that is disseminated rather wi wildly, widely and wildly is the fact that our uh, budget of $17.5 million is in excess of $3 million more than the EPS model provides for. What people haven't considered when quoting that number is the fact that R17.5 includes debt service, which is not a part of the EPS model. And therefore, the actual difference between um, what the EPS, um, and that's for those of you who don't know the essential programs and services model of funding education, um, the difference between our budget um, net of debt service and the number uh, dictated by the state is 1.3 million, not in excess of $3 million. Um, that's, that's one point I'd like to make. And continuing, um, I'd, I'd like to a add for the record, things that are not covered, or some of the things that are not covered in the essential program and service model. 37% of all high school courses considered honors or AP level courses. EPS funds only essential level courses. So those courses are not considered at all in the EPS model. And I can't imagine Cape Elizabeth without honors and AP classes. Um, the next is less than one-sixth of funding to continue the athletic and co-curricular activities available to students. We spend uh, several hundred thousand dollars. Um, and I think that based on uh, my 15 years in Cape Elizabeth, I'd like to see someone try and reduce the, uh, the athletic budget to meet the one-sixth 
that uh, the state provides for. It would be interesting. We certainly wouldn't be having state championship teams. Um, none of the funding necessary for programs to help lower performing students reach the state learning results. If we want to consider ourselves, and I think the board agrees, a superior school district, our progress is measured by the incremental improvement in those students at the lower end as well as the students at the upper end. And the learning results uh, that are being put in place certainly have raised the ante on that. Um, if we want to have kids at age 21 still in our high school, um, not funding these achievement centers uh, is one way of uh, assuring that, or dropouts. Um, little or no funding for foreign language instruction at the K to eight levels. And um, I think everybody is realizing that the earlier we begin language education, uh, the better off we are, the better off our students are. And as we, you know, as we become increasingly a global society, um, what we're looking at right now will pale in significance to uh, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And I'm not quite certain that everybody in the world is going to change and switch to English on our behalf. Um, little or no funding, uh, limited funding for other enrichment work anywhere, I believe that refers to the arts. Yeah, um, or, or some of the uh, um, co-curricular activities that we have that include um, many different sciences, baths, um, other things. And once again, I believe Cape Elizabeth would be seen as a poorer school district for not being able to provide the arts or the basics of the arts, uh, although we do do better than that, um, or those co-curricular activities. Um, we're only 7.5% above the very basic EPS funding level. I think that that's uh, pretty good, but there's the, the impact coming down the road at us can be significant. And I just wanted to pass along some of that information on the record to the public um, that things are not as rosy as we'd like to think they are. Bob? Yeah, I just have one or two more items. One is uh, the construction update, and I will pass pictures or I'll start them down this end and, and pass them along. Um, the, um, we are wrapping up the elementary school, and you might say, well, didn't we do that a long time ago? But there was some landscaping that had to be done on the outside. They have finished that over April vacation, and we will be um, uh, meeting this uh, Friday, I believe, with the uh, contractor and the architect to try to wrap up that project. Um, with the understanding, of course, that there's at least a year warranty on absolutely everything, um, including the uh, grass taking and the uh, sod taking and whatever. Uh, um, so um, we are looking forward to that because that, that has been a, a great project. And, and as we've stated before, it did come in um, ahead of schedule and under budget. and that's somewhat a rarity in these days. Um, the high school construction is going along quite well. Um, uh, you'll see pictures as they come around of uh, uh, the, the um, parking lots having been paved finally. Um, the student parking lot is now about double the size that it was. Um, the parking lot down near the uh, industrial arts uh, wing um, and art wing is um, completed. Um, that road needs some work, and we need to uh, talk about uh, in the committee about that work because uh, that was not in the project, and we need to see what we can do about that. We, um, um, the cafeteria, as the uh, high school students mentioned, is open, the entire thing now. Um, they've started to do the landscaping outside of there. Um, there's pictures of uh, one of the four classrooms that's now open on the, uh, as math classrooms on the, uh, the top floor, um, right next to where the, all the work is going on for the main entrance. Um, so work continues and continues to proceed. Um, we're still very hopeful. We're still feeling we're ahead of schedule, slightly, not a lot. Um, but there's so many pieces and parts that are are unfinished because um, they can't be finished until something else gets done. 
So that's what makes renovation a much more difficult project than um, adding a wing to a school where it's just a, a totally separate entity. Um, I, I, I wrote an article for The View coming out that thanks the high school students and thanks the high school staff for their patience um, because it has not been an easy year. Some of you were up in my office this morning holding a meeting when they were uh, starting to put the uh, siding on the back of the building here and trying to concentrate when it sounds like woodpeckers are, are right on your, uh, the outside of your head is a little difficult. And I know that the high school has put up with a lot of things like that this year. And thank you to all of the people there because it's really, um, it's really been a test. But they've, they've really acted superbly and we thank them for that. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention was that uh, we took a picture while um, Alan and Steve and I were together this week, and I don't have it with me here, but if you want to feel like a dwarf, stand next to these two guys. I, I didn't realize it until we saw the picture, but uh, it, it, it is really quite a scene. <laughs> anyway. I, I also understand along the same lines there's a very interesting cartoon of Alan and I that appeared in the... Uh, Main Sunday Telegram. <laughs> I'm still trying to live down. I have a comment I'd like yes. to make on an earlier item. Um, under the sports done right mm -hmm. that you talked about, I, I think it's great that we're sending a team up to this meeting. Um, and I realize that we can't, you know, send an unlimited number of people. But I did, I did just want to say that I noticed in the letter that they sent us that they outlined. Uh, a number of different groups that they might suggest sending to this kind of thing and um, some of the groups that I would really like to um, say I'd like to see included down the road because this time we're sending two administrators one teacher and a school board member but the, amongst the groups that they suggest sending to this kind of thing are student athletes um, parents of athletes and coaches and I just think that down the road, as we pursue the sports done right, I would really like to see us um, include in whatever next steps we decide to take in our community towards um, embracing the sports done right. I want to see these groups included because I think that they would add a huge amount to whatever we decide to do with this. Bob, is there any anything going to be done about the road down back? Is that going to be added to the project? Or? Um, we are looking at that right now. The um, the road from the how do I describe this? From the intersection up nearest the school down to the the entrance to the senior parking lot is in pretty good shape. When you get below that, it starts to deteriorate. None of that road is part of the project right now. And so we've asked for um, estimates on what it will cost to make uh, repairs to that road um, and to make repairs that will last because Bob uh, Malley is telling us, don't, don't just go in and do an overlay. Um, it won't do anything. Um, so we're looking at that right now and we're trying to uh, come up with whether or not we can afford to do it or not. But um, that's what we know we have to do the part down between the two lower parking lots, you know, the, the turnaround and the, uh, the new parking lot next to the building. Um, but we may also carry it up a little bit further because the, there are some parts that are really in tough shape up there too. So we, we'll keep you posted on that. Rough shape is being very mild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Anyone else? In that case, we'll move on to school reports. Um, Pond, school, Pond Cove School Program Report. Cindy Perkins, I'm the school counselor at Pond Cove, and I guess I'm your program for Pond Cove tonight. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what I do and what the position at Pond Cove is, and 
I'm going to see if this will work and not have to set up the whole stand. I think it will. First, I'd like to say thank you for the opportunity to share with you the role of my position as school counselor at Pond Cove School. Um, by way of introduction, uh, my name is Cindy Perkins. I come to Pond Cove with a variety of experience, both in public education and private counseling therapy over the last 28 years. My school positions have included teacher, administrator, school social worker, and now school counselor. I also work privately in the mental health field in the Portland area. I've worked in a number of school systems over the years and feel very privileged to work in Cape Elizabeth this year and with the wonderful group of professionals that I've had the privilege of working with at Pond Cove. Without the professionalism of the administration and staff there, my job would not be doable in any form. In recent years, the needs of our school communities have changed and Pond Cove had the foresight to see this and has hired me as a professional counselor as opposed to a school guidance counselor, and that's part of the difference I'd like to explain to you um, tonight and kind of how we're shifting that role to meet the needs of the students um, and doing that in an effort to best support the students, staff, parents, and school community at Pond Cove. The mental and emotional health needs of the children in our schools have increased over recent years. There are many reasons for this. I'm not sure I have any or all of the answers, and there certainly is not one easy answer. Um, one of my beliefs about this is that there are fewer and for fewer resources available to families with children with serious emotional and mental health needs. So more and more families look to the schools for direction. School is the place where all of our children spend most of their day and therefore we become the place where services begin and where services have to be directly linked to. I think it's critical that the school have regular communication with families and any other services that are in place to support our children. We need more and more to work as a team with all people involved in our children's lives. And that's where the importance of changing this position and moving it to a more professional counseling position has come into play in order to best benefit the children. Um, my attempt is to kind of show you what my days look like. Feel free to jump in with questions. Um, I kind of jumped all over the place and hope I'm covering enough to kind of help you understand what I do and, and what we do to help support the students at Pond Cove. First, I just kind of made a list. Um, I apologize for how this got crumpled in my car on the way here. But um, who I work with, I work with the students first and foremost at Pond Cove. We have 640 plus students. I sat down the other day and counted up the students who have come through my door needing pretty high level needs um, on a mostly a one-on-one -on -one basis this year and came up with at least 110 kids who I have needed to serve this year. Um, and so obviously there's one of me and 110 of them with high level needs and so you can imagine how thoroughly I'm able to do that and not able to do that and that's one of my frustrations but appreciation for the next people who I work with which is the staff. And um, so the next piece I do is support both staff for, in order to help them support their students and also supporting the staff for themselves, um, because when you have a staff of 75 to 85 people, there's a lot of people with their own things that come into play and need support from time to time, um, both in their own personal interactions and professional interactions and how those affect, affect our kids and how do they su best support our, our kids. I worked very closely with administration. We spend a good part of every day connecting and making sure we're supporting and covering everyone that needs to be covered. I spend a lot of my time with families and parents um, on the phone, individual meetings, and in um, parent groups and, and support and educational groups. I spend a good part of my time supporting classrooms. I'm sometimes asked to come in and mediate a situation that's going on in a classroom or, or help solve a problem that's, that's come up in a particular classroom. 
I worked with the, had the privilege this year of working with the third grade um, training the mediators and with the fourth grade mediators who were trained last year. Um, it's a wonderful program. I was just introduced to this specific program this year and have been very, very impressed with it and would like to see that grow next year now that I understand it better. I see a lot of potential for that filtering down through all the grades at Pond Cove and I think will have an impact on all the, all the kids in our school. I spend a lot of time interacting with outside agencies and I'll be more specific about that a little bit later with private mental health clinicians in the area. I work um, with Gail Schmader with, with mentors to help support our students. I serve on the TAT committee. Um, I have um, chaired the crisis team for Pond Cove and will also work with the district crisis committee this year. And I also serve on the climate committee. I just kind of sat down and made a list of kind of the, the major issues that have come across my desk this year to give you some sampling of the kinds of things that, that we are dealing with as a school for our children um, through the counseling office at Fun Cove. Um, playground issues are a daily event um, and sometimes pretty serious playground issues. Um, sometimes, you know, playground issues sounds like this young child simple little thing and sometimes they some, bring up some pretty serious um, issues in terms of how kids are dealing with those and how they're relating with other kids and how they resolve those and ultimately affects their major life sk skills in terms of interpersonal relationships. Friendships, social concerns um, are certainly a big piece of what I do but don't hit the priority list. I have circled in green the ones that are sort of where I spend most of my time and what the highest priorities have been this year. Family support is huge. I spend a lot of time supporting parents and families in order to best support our kids. Um, behaviors, any multitude of behaviors that, that cross my desk. I spend a lot of time dealing with children more and more who have pretty serious mental health issues and mental health diagnoses. Um, and there are more and more children who are impacted by that and need strong, strong support with, with, their, with their diagnoses and, and in order to help them through that and get the best, edu <coughs> best education they can get in our system. I've dealt a lot with people who have had serious illness of family members this year. Um, and yes, even in a K-4 school, we deal with children who have suicidal thoughts and ideations um, and pull in support for, for those children. Um, anger management is a big part of my day. Um, some, some kids really struggling with how to handle anger, how to let it out, and how to do that in a way that's not hurtful to themselves or someone else. Um, I've really been struck with the amount of children I'm dealing with with anxiety issues. Um, that's very concerning to me to see as many kids come across through my office doors and parents calling me with high level anxiety issues for K to 4 level. Um, and I think that's something we as a community and also as a culture really need to start looking at is how come we have so many young kids with such high anxiety. Um, school phobia. Um, I've, I've had a lot of kids this year with some pretty serious school phobia issues. I was really struck this year by the amount of children I dealt with with separation issues. We're not talking just kindergarten, first grade kids at the beginning of the year. I'm talking about K through four kids, <coughs> all the way through to still this part of the year, getting calls from parents saying, my child doesn't want to come to school, my child is absolutely refusing to come to school. And I think there's a very direct tie back to the anxiety issues. <coughs> I don't think that's about our kids not liking to be at school. They're usually fine once they get there, but it's, I think, a lot to do with how busy we keep our kids and how much more downtime they need than they are getting um, is one, one piece that I think is showing up there. Um, and also, um, children who have lost a family member. Um, and there have been several of those. Um, so that's kind of a smattering of what I what I do and what comes across my desk and as I said the green ones are kind of where the priority becomes and has to become and, and where I spend my day. Um, and helping with those children with the classroom teacher so the classroom teacher can work with the bigger group of children 
and the part that has really impressed me, having worked in several schools across the state, the part that's impressed me the most about the Pond Cove staff is most teachers are coming to me saying, what can I do to help keep this child in my classroom? What kind of supports can we put in place to help this child be in the classroom the most time that's available? I've worked in schools where the priority is, can you take this child out and fix this child? And I'm not getting that kind of request at Pond Cove. The request I get at Pond Cove is the teachers are saying, help me help this child. And that's their first line of defense if they want to do it in the classroom if they possibly can. And a lot of times we can um, with family and, and staff support. Earlier I referred to outside agencies and just I just um, jotted down a quick list. I, as I sat here tonight, I thought of three or four more, but this gives you some idea of the outside agencies that I am working with on a daily basis. Um, I work with Casey Family Services, Ingraham Crisis, Maine Medical Center and their outreach program, the Anchor Peer Program. I've worked with Cape Community Services, private clinicians in the area, the Kids First program in Portland, the Center for Breeding Children, both Sweetser and Spurwink, Spring Harbor, the Jason program, um, just to name a few. Um, we have some wonderful agencies in the, in the Portland area and um, I have been able to access a lot of them and we have children connected and, and all these agencies are agencies that are very happy to have us working closely with them and working directly with them. So that's another chunk of my time. Oh, sorry, there were two pages of that. <laughs> New England Family Institute, Spring Harbor, the Maine Adoption Placement Services, the Maine Department of Human Services, and the Maine Department of Education, and I put et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because I knew I hadn't thought of them all. Part of what I talked about in a model I had used at my last school when I interviewed here um, that, that Cape Elizabeth was receptive to and I think has been well received is me working on a regular basis one evening a week. And the reason for that is, is twofold. Um, one is so that I am available one evening a week regularly for parents who are working during the daytime who would like to meet and talk about issues that are coming up with their children. That has been very well received. I have usually several appointments through my evenings, often until at least this time of night and sometimes later. Um, the other thing I have put into that is some educational programs and some support programs. Um, some examples of ones I have done this year, which I hope to very much expand upon next year. Um, I, did, I have done some programs on separation and divorce, um, both educational programs and support programs. Those have been very well received. Um, I did a, a, an educational program early in the year because I was really struck when I first arrived here by how many adoptive and foster children we have in the Cape Elizabeth school system. Um, that program has really taken off. That group of parents have really formed as a cohesive unit and really want to continue as a, as a support group for each other and have found um, great need and support within that. Um, next year, hope to meet once a month very regularly. Um, I have had presentations and um, some evenings on loss and, and grieving for the children in the community and for the parents. Um, I did an evening on anxiety in children, um, had a, a good attendance that evening. Obviously, not only my concern, but there are a lot of parents in the community concerned about that too. And just recently did an evening um, where, we, where we talked about some ideas and generated some ideas to sh shift the focus on the playground and create a little bit different kind of climate on that playground. So that's kind of that's kind of where all that is. That's pretty much what I do. Um, I jotted down sort of a typical day for me. A typical day starts with me jotting down the students that I would like to see that day. I usually come up with at least a dozen kids that I would really hope to see during that day. I tend to have somewhere between four to eight phone calls to return to parents. I usually meet with one or two parents. I usually have many staff consultations, both formal and informal during the day. 
at least one, if not more, meeting um, with Tom to discuss any issues that have come up. I interact with any crisis that may call from classroom teacher calling and saying this child is, is not able to, to stay in control right now. Can you come down and support this student to a call from the playground to try to help a child work through a problem on the playground. Um, I tend to leave my day after hoping to see somewhere around a dozen children, maybe having seen somewhere between one to four students and feeling like I wish I could have gotten to maybe 25 students. Um, that's the reality of my job and it's not a reality I like. Um, the good side of that is there is a staff sitting at Pond Cove who picks up those pieces and works with me to cover the kids that I'm not able to get to every day. Um, as much as I would like to and as intensely as I would like to. Um, usually in the course of that day, I touch base with those kids that I didn't get to spend the time I would like to have spent the time with um, and check in with them or check in with their families. So we are meeting their needs in the best way that we can at this point in time. Ideally, I'd like to see about six of me, but <laughs> I don't think in any school system that's going to happen anytime soon. Uh, my hopes for next year are to get to know better, more of the student population. I have available to me an intern next year who um, would like to work with me two days a week on who I will be supervising. That's going to help a lot. That's someone who I hope to have pick up the pieces of doing some small groups with some social concerns and friendship concerns and try to deal with those pieces because those have not hit my priority scale. So. I have hope that next year that piece will get picked up um, in a way that, that works. I would like to do more with staff wellness support next year, and I would like to expand on the evening programs next year. So those are, those are my, my hopes for the coming year. Does anybody have any questions about what I do every day? Oh, I had a question. Sure. But I'm, d I'm really struck by the, the breadth of the issues, the seriousness of the issues, which seems to be growing, and the numbers that you're dealing with. And I mean, I hear you saying that you'd like to see six of yourself, but, but really, I mean, I'd like to know to what extent, I mean, how big are the gaps that you're not able to, you know, to meet? And how, um, I mean, are you just sort of, you know, patching certain situations because there's not time? Or, you know, as we look down the road, I mean, you know, thinking about from a budget perspective, what what really are, you know, what really is the kind of the hard need in terms of it? It, it sounds like I don't know how all of those, how you could possibly meet all of those demands, you know, with just one person. You're right, and I don't. I mean, the reality is I really don't. Um, I think I am hitting the key issues, and I, and I think that was the, the purpose in sort of shifting the role and that the reason the staff asked last year and hired me was because they wanted someone with a professional counseling credentials so that we could hit those priority issues. And we are hitting those priority issues. I think that the kids with the biggest needs, their needs are being met now. And they're being met in a variety of ways. And part of that is me accepting that I can't just do all those, that some of that is delegating to teachers. And I, I can't say enough how privileged I feel to be working with a staff who's willing to pick up those pieces, because they really do. Um, and they really do understand the priority scale that I work with. And that's not always the case. And that, that really does help. So I think in terms of priority, because of the new format this year, we are meeting the high profile, high priority needs at Pond Cove. And my concern is sort of the next level down at this point. And I, I do have a lot of hope that having an intern a couple days a week will pick up a, a, a chunk of that. Um, that's a temporary solution, but it's a solution for now, and it's a solution that I think will help for now. Um, this person is someone who is actually licensed and would like to just have some more experience at an elementary level. Um, has done a little bit of work for me this year and has done a great job, so I really see that as, as being able to, from an internship perspective, be able to help for now. Um, and that may be what we do, is look for solutions like that, and I will continue looking for things. I delegate a lot, I, um, and this is also a community where we have a lot of parents willing to help, so we, ha we get help for things like 
initiating this playground effort. Um, I have several volunteers in terms of parents who are willing to kick in with that, which traditionally in a more guidance kind of position would have been something that I would have done. Um, that certainly doesn't hit my screen in terms of priority now. Um, but there are people out there willing to help pick that up. Um, in all seriousness, looking down the road, 650 kids and one person is really not realistic. Um, we do the best we can with that. Um, but I guess to answer your question, to have two of me even would make a huge, huge difference in, in that school. How do you work with the social worker, Pam, at Pond Cove? Is Sam and I work very closely. Our roles are very different. Um, she's, in, and I'm sure special ed would, would talk more directly about that, but, but because of IEPs and special ed regulations and all that, and Claire's here to justify that, she's a lot more locked in than I am. I, I have a lot more flexibility than she does. Um, we work very closely making sure we cover needs and, and pick up pieces for each other when we have to. Um, and so she covers the, the children who are IEP'd into social services through special ed. Um, and that pretty much, that does fill, more than fill her day. <laughs> so that's a whole different group of kids. Exactly. To the hundred and... In, in addition to the ones that I'm covering. <coughs> um, am I correct in assuming you work, at least initially, say, for the transition from fourth to fifth grade with middle school guidance? I will be involved in that transition this year. That's a new piece. I'm just sort of, because of being new here, just learning how I fit into that. But yes, I am involved in it that. It seems like you have such a comprehensive services to the best of your ability. And you'd hate to say, I'd like to think that it was a K through 12 continuum in terms Absolutely. of servicing these students. Absolutely. All my high priority kids will be passed on to the appropriate people at the middle school and make sure that we keep services in place for them. Um, I'm currently working with a lot of the parents in terms of that, too, and making sure they understand what, what their children's needs are for the following years, too. Cindy, I've followed with interest some of the things that you're doing. Um, I particularly appreciate your out-of-the-box thinking and your willingness to accommodate parent meeting times and things like that. Um, to piggyback on what Ann brought up, I, I think she, she hits a very critical point for us. Over the years we have, Tom has presented to us at budget season um, numerous requests that for a variety of reasons, we, in reality we just haven't been able to um, accommodate. We're taking a, uh, we're going to be taking a somewhat different approach and beginning our thinking for next year's budget a lot sooner than we ever have before. Um, and tonight's not the night, but we would certainly like to pick your brain <laughs> and Tom's brain um, to get a better understanding so that we as a board can wrap our arms around the needs as, you know, as Ann brought up and as you're telling us the holes are there, so that we can at least begin to try and fold in um, a budgetary, partial budgetary response to that as we're moving down the road. So I think that uh, you can put that on your uh, calendar in general for something that uh, needs to happen sooner rather than later before we get bogged down in all the minutia. That's great. That's and, good to hear. And, and I, again, I think, speak for everybody, we appreciate your work. <clears throat> Thank you. I'd be happy to meet with people and kind of brainstorm ways to, to cover that. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Now we need to move on to the high school principal's report. Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. It's okay. I'm just waiting until this gets down. I actually just want to do two things. Um, the first is just going to be me. If everybody can sort of pass those things down, I think there's one for everybody. Um, I'm only going to be taking about a minute. And then I'm going to 
I, I, I'm going to see the, the remaining few minutes of my time to a, a, some, a couple of folks here who have been waiting to uh, talk to you about a, a science extracurricular activity that's begun this year. Um, Okay, um, the, what I would like to do is just mention and ask uh, board members to put on your calendars to the extent you can uh, some key dates in connection with a high school's accreditation visit in October. Um, and what I've given to you is a, this is a draft schedule. We haven't met with the actual chair of our visiting committee and this may change a little bit here and there, but it's sort of the framework of the kinds of things that the visiting committee will be doing once they get here on October 16th, which is a Sunday. Um, and what I've done here is I've highlighted in yellow for board members uh, those events during this activity which will call for as many of you as can possibly participate in the events. Um, so I wanted to give at least a, as much of a heads up as I could that this is coming down the road. And most of the events are actually on the first day, Sunday, October 16th. Uh, it's a day when most if not all of our staff will be in the high school for the bulk of the day. Uh, the first event uh, that board presentation, board uh, um, presence at would be useful for would be a panel presentation to the entire visiting committee. This is where we introduce ourselves to the visiting committee at uh, an event from 1.45 to 2.55 p.m. in the high school. Um, and then there is a, uh, we go, they go right into concurrent meetings, one of which is meeting with school board members. Um, so again, um, as many of you as can put this down on your calendar and possibly sort of block out a chunk of time. Uh, I will certainly get more specific about it later, but I wanted to just sort of um, put it in your calendars if possible. And then there is a reception for the visiting committee um, as well from 5 to 6 o'clock. Then what happens is the committee works in the school and on its own for the next couple of days, um, and there really is not under the current format of the schedule. But again, this could change depending on the preference of the committee chair who hasn't been identified for us yet. Uh, there is no other formal uh, event until the last day and actually the last event before the committee leaves on Wednesday the 19th at 2.30 uh, the committee will be making some very brief remarks uh, to the entire faculty and and the superintendent um, and as many members of the school board as can possibly make it I think it's good to have as much of a showing as we possibly can uh, that will not be at all an unveiling of the entire report it will be sort of some hints at some of the highlights that will likely be included in the report when it gets to us some sometime down the road. Um, so that is my piece. And then I, I would like to simply uh, turn over for a few minutes um, to a few students and to one of our new teachers at the high school uh, to take up the balance of my time. Um, one of the lacks that we've had in the high school since I've been here is uh, in terms of extracurricular activities, we have a wonderful extracurricular at the activity list at the high school, but one of the glaring absences for the last few years has been anything that's related to science. And actually this year we have two, science, two teachers who have started science-related clubs. One is a robotics club, which is uh, being advised by Evan Thayer, who did a presentation on the board a couple months ago. And the other one is a science olympiad club, uh, which is being advised this year by Dr. Sean Garrett. Um, so I've invited Dr. Corrette to speak for a few minutes with some students about their Science Olympiad experience this year um, and to make a bit of a shameless plug uh, for a proposal that will come to the board in a month or two after I sit down with Bob and sort of uh, see if we can do this for possible participation at some point down next year with the North Shore Science League, which you've heard about a little bit. But this is just a quick plug. Um, and Dr. Gret has brought a couple of students from the Science Olympiad team uh, Dr. Gret himself, has, this is probably the first time the board has met Dr. Gret. Um, he's a graduate of Middlebury College. He has a doctorate in microbiology and molecular genetics from the University of Vermont and Thomas Jefferson University. And he's done significant postdoctoral work at Harvard University. Um, he's a published author of a number of works uh, regarding the biochemistry of cancer. I can't even pronounce the words in the title, let alone understand what they're all about. Um, in 1999, Dr. Gret left the lab, the research lab, Retories, uh, that he had lived in for the previous few years for the high school classroom. Um, and he taught, taught physics for four years at Saugus High School in Massachusetts. Um, and I stole him, along with his wife, Susan, who is also a science teacher at the high school who teaches biology. Um, but while he was there, Dr. Gret was involved, actually, in the North Shore Science League. And so that's where his involvement comes from. Uh, he is an energetic 
Uh, he is funny. He is incredibly clear in his explanations to kids of very complex abstract concepts. Um, and I am thrilled to have him at our, at our high school. And he's been a real hit with students. So Dr. Gret, and then I think he'll probably introduce the students. <laughs> I don't know if I can live up to that intro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am here to talk to you guys, actually introduce you to the Science Club. We started a club at the high school this year, and before I get into it, actually, I did put together a little something for you. While he's passing that out, I will also say in the interest of fair disclosure one more time that I do have a personal interest in this, but you'll, you'll see what it is. <laughs> I'll just mention that. <laughs> okay, uh, before I talk about what we did this year, I do want to say a couple things. Um, I came in this year with this idea, and that we got a team together and actually fielded a team this March for the Maine Science Olympiad, Olympiad is incredible. I want to thank the school board, I want to thank Mr. Shedd, I want to thank several parents in particular, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Terry Ann Scriven, who took most of these pictures you're looking at, and I'd like to thank uh, Susan Klopp, and several other parents who really supported us, and also I'd like to thank the Education Foundation, they really came through with money, it was amazing we got this together within one year. So basically we got a team together at the beginning of the year, and we're able to go compete this year in the Olympiad. Basically the point of the Science Club is we try to take science out of the classroom and make it fun for the students. Make it a really fun experience. It does end up being a competition, and the main science, or the Science Olympiad is a national organization, and they run meets in each state. Here in the state of Maine, there's about 13 teams that competed this year, and the way these Olympiads work is they generally run in the middle of March, and we basically field a team, we can field a team of up to 15 people, and we prepare for these meets, and there's generally about 22 events at each meet. And these events range from sometimes kind of thinking on the spot, having to solve a problem, like one of the events was they had to get data from the internet, organize it, and present it. And some of the cooler events involve building stuff. And our students built many, many interesting contraptions and devices, as you can see on this page. Uh, they built a bottle rocket, uh, they built, you can see in the bottom picture, they built a trebuchet and a tower. Uh, they built, this is a Rube Goldberg device, a very intricate device built by Lucas and Ben. And they also built a robot, Matt and Calvin will be here to talk to you about that. And in addition to that, they also built airplanes. And basically it's just a way to have a lot of fun with them. So as, again, I was absolutely amazed with the student response to this. I never expected to feel a full team. And much to my surprise, we ended up feel like 20 students ended up signing up for the Science Club, of which unfortunately we were able to, only able to bring 15 this year. And oh, by the way, if anybody has any questions at any point, please do feel free to ask. So uh, we'll talk about this year's Olympiad. I'm actually going to ask Matt and Kelvin to show you guys the robot they built and talk about the event they competed in. Hi, I'm Calvin Klopp, and this is Matt Gray. Uh, we signed up for the Science Club about mid-February, February, and uh, there were many different different events. Like Dr. Gret said, you could build bottle rockets, robots, trebuchets, and there were lab reports and things you could do with this. And uh, we built the robot. This is the robot. It had to perform certain tasks, such as uh, picking things up and dropping them into a box on a like an eight by six foot playing field, they called it. And uh, the robot had certain size restrictions, power restrictions, which was the hardest part about this, that and designing it. We spent more time designing it, I think, than we did building it. I think we spent half of the time, three quarters of the time thinking about what to do because we'd never been there. And then when we did get there, it exposed us to many different ideas that other people had because there were so many teams. I think there were about 10 different schools there. And uh, at the end of the competition, we ended up getting a fourth out of, I think, 10 robots worked or so. And some of them didn't work, but it was no problem because it was about 
having fun not winning the competition. Even if the robots didn't work, people still got a congratulations. And uh, I'd just like to say how much time and effort we put into building this robot. And then uh, it was a lot of fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, it was actually a good lesson of trial and error also, because a lot of the time we would uh, put something together and then find it didn't work at all and not as well as we once thought. So we went through many designs and redesigns. When it worked pretty well when we finally did put it all together. But it was a lot of fun. I just ask, could you could you build any kind of robot, or were there guidelines or parameters for the? What um, you designed it to do is um, it has to fit in a thir thirty centimeter by thirty centimeter by thirty centimeter box, and uh, the object of the robot is to pick up various objects on the playing field, such as ping pong balls, corks, rubber stoppers, lift them, and put them into the box. And uh, you got points based on how many objects you either got into the box or pushed across the plank. And that was the uh, object. Great. Thanks. I've got to tell the story. I hope you guys can forgive me for this. About three weeks prior to the meeting, Matt and Calvin walked into my classroom and they looked at me and they're like, Dr. Brad, there's no way we can do this. There's no way we can build this. So we sat down. I didn't realize the complexity of the event. I kind of just filled out the events. <laughs> and I did not realize the complexity of what they had to build. So I immediately ran out and went to a Toys R Us, got a bunch of Erector sets, brought that in. And we sat down and just kind of planned things out. And I was like, you guys can do this. You can do this. I heard this from Calvin's mom. Apparently they went home that night, stared at it for three hours, <laughs> and then came up with that. It's incredible. Actually, if you look at the work that went into there, I, I cannot commend them enough. This, they really thought about this. The pulleys, the arm. The, this, I always thought a robot was going to be a simple thing, but when you actually sit down and think about what's involved, moving the arm and doing everything, it involves quite a bit. And these two guys did an incredible job. Coming in fourth place, and I was out of 13 teams. I mean, three robots didn't work, but those teams did feel a group. Coming in fourth place as first-year students with two and a half weeks just says a tremendous amount of how well these guys did. Uh, okay, we have a little demo of this at work. <laughs> no. All right. So, in any case, they did, they did an excellent job. Okay, um, the next thing I wanted to talk to the board about was our plans for next year. I mean, the club, I think, went extremely well. We have <coughs> only one senior who's leaving us. And from what I've heard from everybody else, they would like to keep this club going and have a club again next year. Everyone seems interested in competing in the Science Olympiad again. I think, in fairness, unfortunately, I had to turn away five students. And I did it based on order when people signed up. So one of the things I would hope we could do for next year is actually field a second team. The Olympiad allows it to field two teams. So we can field two teams of 50. And I don't... Some of the teams in the Olympiad have tryouts, and I, I would not want to do that. I think any student who's interested in doing this, we should. I, I would like to see them have the chance to be involved in the Main Science Olympiad. Okay, so, um, and the other part is now, the Science Club, we started this year, got the interest going. I'm thinking it would be nice to start expanding into different types of things. And I've gotten several good ideas for the future, such as Eco Challenge, things like that. The next step I was hoping to do in the next couple of years is to start fielding a team for something known as in the North Shore Science League. That's what I used to compete in Massachusetts. I was very fortunate. Actually, that is the handout. Did you guys get the handout from me to describe that? So I was very fortunate that I, I have competed in that league. I used to field the team there from Saugus. I know the president very well. And I asked Charlie Dugan if they could change the bylaws to allow a team from Maine to compete. They did vote on that last year and they are willing to allow us to field the team. So to talk about that, there's another student, and she's going to make a plug for me, very shameless, is <laughs> Mary Cox is going to talk to you guys about the North Shore Science League. Okay, this year, 
I also participated in the Science Olympiad, and we had a really good time. We went into it thinking we're going to check it out, see how this goes, sort of an experimental year for our science team. And other teams had been practicing weekly since the beginning of the year, so we sort of went in there not expecting to get the gold or anything. We ended up getting seventh out of 13, which was amazing when you think about it. Um, and how that just, I think that just shows how much almost raw talent that cables of the students have. And if we were allowed to pursue that further, how much further we could go. So that's where we come to the North Shore Science League. As Dr. Garrett mentioned, um, when he was working in Massachusetts, they participated in the North Shore Science League, which met instead of once a year having 22 events, six times a year having three events. And I think, and I think that the other science club members agree with me, I know they do, um, that this would be a great opportunity for us for many reasons. First of all, it allows us to have a lot more people participating because in the Science Olympiad we could only have 15 people, we had to turn people away, and that was just in the first year when not many people even knew about it. And with the North Shore Science League, there are six events and seven people can compete in each event, so hypothetically you could have 42 different people participating. And it's throughout the year, so maybe somebody can't participate in the fall, but when soccer's over, they could participate in the winter. And Cape Elizabeth doesn't have too many academic clubs, and I think that people want an academic club that has the fun element that the North Shore Science League has. And that's another thing that we think is an advantage, um, something that the Science Olympiad didn't necessarily provide, because the Science Olympiad is national, and they have standards for every single competition throughout the country. And it's so every year you have the same events. But in the North Shore Science League, the events are created by um, the teams and the coaches. They change every competition every year. Um, while with the Science Olympiad, you have the same events every year. And it's sort of once a team wins, they just win keep winning every year because they know how to build the best robot and they know how to build the best trebuchet. And I think that the North Shore Science League would just provide more opportunities, more creative opportunities for us to co compete. Um, in the North Shore Science League, we also have some of the best schools in the country that Cables would be, would be able to compete against, like Phillips Andover Academy and St. John's Prep. And I think that if we were given this chance, Cables with would give them a run for their money. And so we have the student interest, we have the approval of the North Shore Science League, and now all we need is your support. Thank you. Very well presented. Uh, do you guys have any questions? <clears throat> okay, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think it sounds great, and I really appreciate your enthusiasm in bringing this whole thing to our school. And I mean, I can see that the students are so excited and enthusiastic. So I, I really thank you for trying to make this happen for our school community. Thanks. That item is on our agenda on the new business. And um, I don't want to require you folks to stay just to hear that. Um, but I think you'll be happy in the morning. <laughs> All right. Um, on to committee reports. Elaine is handling the sub finance subcommittee tonight. Uh, yes. Um, Kathy was unable to be here this evening, so I'm just going to give a, a short report. The Finance Committee met prior to uh, this evening's meeting, and we had a report on the per Food Service Task Force. Uh, there was some discussion regarding uh, some of the outstanding balances, and it was agreed that there would be another meeting uh, with the uh, uh, Finance Chair, the Superintendent, Sue King, who is the Food Service Director, and Pauline Portri, our, our Business Manager, again, they would be pursuing some of those past due accounts um, that have gone to uh, collections and also um, some of the uh, parameters for collecting them. 
Uh, we also uh, reviewed the revolving renovation loan fund application and we'll be having a, a motion for approval uh, to submit that later on tonight. And we also signed the appropriations report. Thank you, Elaine. Um, and policy subcommittee. Okay, our policy committee met on May 5th. The first item of business um, under new business that we discussed, we uh, did a review of our conflict of interest and nepotism policies that we had um, approved about a year ago. At the time that we did that, we, because of the numerous changes in both of those policies, we said that we would do a review of them this year. And in, uh, by way of doing that, Bob sent out a request to the administrators to ask if they had experienced or seen any um, effect um, negative effect from those policies and um, from the feedback he got back there in fact had been none and so we're not going to be recommending um, any further action or review of those two policies. The next item of business um, that we're continuing to talk about is policy IKB which is homework and we reviewed about seven or eight different policies from in-state districts as well as out-of-state districts that Bob gathered for us. We also looked at um, a lengthy article that summarized research um, that had been done over the past decade on homework, you know, K through 12, and um, kind of looked at the common threads through those different policies and what was said in the article. And one of the conclusions that we came to is that opinions are varied in this um, field um, amongst educators, amongst parents, amongst our own policy committee, and I understand from our own administrators amongst our staff at, in our own schools here. Um, so it's one of those things that people have really varying and strong feelings about. What we are going to be doing is um, drafting a policy, pulling some of the things that we talked about that day that we would like to see in ours. And that policy will include kind of three major areas, so it will be a lot lengthier than our current homework policy. And the three components of that will be definition and purpose, our overarching philosophies, and specific expectations and guidelines. Um, we'll be looking at that in the next month. I don't know, you know, if we're going to have something to present. Hopefully in the fall we'll have something. Um, the other thing we talked about was the need for some kind of, a, to, to look at some kind of a homework club or variation thereof and just sort of keep that, you know, in the forefront to address um, in our schools in the next year. The next item was our um, continuing discussion of our B policies. Those are the board governance policies, most of which we have already reviewed and have been approved. But there are uh, just a few others, and we decided we looked at a lot of different um, B policies samples from Maine School Management Association, and we decided that we would be um, uh, taking on just three that we wanted to do drafts of and present for first reading. And those will be BDC, committee appointments, BDD, board and superintendent relationship, BDB, board officers. Those would all be new policies don't, that don't currently exist for us. And then we are probably also going to be looking at a change in BDE standing committees, which we've already approved, but we just found some inconsistencies that we need to address. Um, and then, um, Finally, we did discuss what, what we need to accomplish by the end of school. Um, and one of the things is that we, we wanted to, we have been working for months now on the I policies, that is instruction, which is a really huge section. And we've completed probably about three quarters of that. And since Bob has been here for the review of most of that, we don't want to have to start all over again. I mean, not that we would, but we want to, you know, sort of get those done and at least have the first reading. So we're hopefully going to prepare those for first reading for our June meeting. And then I did just want to mention two other things um, that we had talked about at our last meeting. The substance abuse policy 
subcommittee review committee. I'm sorry, I didn't say that quite right, but <laughs> that committee that we talked about the last time that Trish is going to be chairing is where we are starting to work on that. Trish is sending around emails <clears throat> and hopefully we'll get a meeting together, just at least one uh, sort of planning meeting by the end of the school year. And then the second thing that we've um, just done is we have finally wrapped up the allergy guidelines. We met with Paula Harris, the high school school nurse, and have put together those guidelines for the high schools. So those are now all complete are, and are in place at, at all three of our schools. So I feel that was a big job. So I feel good about that. And I, I think that's it. Thank you, Ann. Any questions? Seeing none. I'm sorry, I have a general policy question. Um, policy committee has done a lot of work this year and, and bringing forth new policies. Are we going to have a new policy book? In fact, actually, mine is like decimated. I, I'm missing policies. So is there any sort of plan to compile a complete policy book for the beginning of next year? Well, Mary and I were just talking about that actually last week. And um, I mean, we could do it in different ways. But what we had thought we would do, and if you know people have different ideas or needs, um, it sounds like you maybe need a whole new book. But um, we thought that at this point, we would start a whole separate book. Instead of inserting the new ones into the current ones, which you know might get kind of confusing, we thought we'd start one whole separate book that had all the approved policies, you know, in there for everybody, and then you could sort of check that against your current policy book. Um, so that's what we thought we'd do for the beginning of next year. Should we be taking what has been approved from the documents we've been getting every meeting and putting them into our book? I mean, you know, some Mary is doing final. Some of them still have notes and things on there, and so she's taking those and finalizing them and putting the date that it's finalized and all that stuff. So I mean, so you we'll can be, do that, but so we'll be getting copies yeah. of those then, or something. Yeah, the final, final without the notes and okay. everything. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, Rebecca, communications. All uh, right, we, let, we met in April and finalized our communication committee's um, goals and strategies, which you have all received a copy of and with <coughs> actually on the agenda for tonight to discuss and hopefully approve. Um, and I think we're just waiting to see how that goes before we meet again as a committee. Oh, uh, is it okay if I just continue as a legislator? Yeah. Um, Unless there's any questions around, I mean, I, I guess most of the questions should be handled later in the agenda if it's relating to the strategies and goals. Yeah, because we are going to uh, look at that later. There was one other piece of work that I asked Rebecca to deal with. We had a legislative alert from the Maine School Management Association regarding increasing the number of hours students can work. Um, the MSMA suggested we take a position on that. I asked Rebecca to, uh, as our legislative liaison, to draft that. And if, well, I guess in that case, we're going to have to. Okay. Just, just so people know, it has been drafted and the school board has uh, received a copy of it and hopefully we can, um, and I guess I would entertain any sort of comments to that this evening and otherwise um, probably go ahead and release that to our um, legislators. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Was, Rebecca, was that, was that it? Was there anything else? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, we'll go back to uh, the communication goals under new business. Um, finally, negotiations committee. Um, the negotiation committee met with the representatives of the administrative unit uh, last week and had a pleasant little chat about ground rules for the negotiations. That's been agreed upon. Um, 
the board is only has its first opportunity tonight to hold an executive session to make sure we're all on the same wavelength. So we were supposed to have our first negotiating session today, and we ask the administrator's indulgence in delaying that for a week or so. Um, so we'll be handling that tonight in executive session. I don't think there's anything else on uh, negotiations at this point. Any questions now? Seeing none, we'll move on to unfinished business. And the first item of business is for Ann, consideration of policy. Excuse me. For second reading. Policy that you have here is policy BDF, which is board advisory committees. This is the second reading. This is, stands exactly as it was presented last month for first reading. There have been no changes. So I'd like to make a motion that we approve policy BDF board advisory committees as presented here. Thank you, Henry. Any discussion, questions? There's just a typo. Yeah, board. Yeah. Or if you were. Right. <laughs> I guess we can get that. Yeah. Uh, Got it. Fixed. Um, any other comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Uh, I'm sorry, 6-0, that's right. Can't count tonight. Um, the next item, Ann, are you handling this? Is Bob handling this? Next item is consideration of the 2005-2006 school calendar. Uh, yes, we brought this forward at our last meeting. Um, we've had a couple of emails since then, um, have responded to those. Um, uh, but I have not heard a great deal of input. I, I don't know if other board members have. Um, just for so that people know, um, we would be starting, uh, first student day would be on September 1st, which is the Thursday before Labor Day. Um, there would be two days of school that week, and then a four-day week after Labor Day. Um, the normal, uh, the normal, school vacations would be off um, the week of, of Thanksgiving, um, the week of starting Friday, December 23rd through, the, through January 2nd, which is a Monday. Um, February week would be week of February 20th, and the April week would be the week of April 17th. Um, this would put us um, out of school on the 14th of June if there were no snow days one day later for every snow day that occurs or storm day that occurs. Um, there are no late start days built in for next year. Instead, there are there is one uh, early release day per month for um, teacher work and that would be the second Wednesday of each month and that would be consistent throughout the school year. Um, that's sort of a summary of the, of the calendar. Um, we did uh, go through the same sort of overview last month. Um, there has been a piece on the website for people to be aware of, um, and I have had very little feedback. Bob, just to clarify, um, are there high school late starts? There are not. Yeah, um, high school just has one. Well, there's one, uh, there's actually two, two I guess, two in, in March. In March for the... And that's because MEAs. of uh, uh, spe a specific situation <coughs> with the MEAs. Yeah. And uh, um, so they would be done for that purpose. Okay. Um, I suppose we need a motion to adopt the calendar. Elaine? I move that we adopt the uh, uh, proposed school calendar for 2005-2006 as presented. Second. Henry, thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? 
Henry, would, did you count for me this time? 6-0. Six six yeah. Thank you. Um, before we go on, I'd just like to thank all the people who worked on the calendar committee because um, it's not an easy thing to get a lot of people to agree on things like when do we start and when do we end and how many days do we have at the holidays and all those kinds of things. And in really um, two to three meetings, this group came together pretty well. And it was, there were representatives of the association, there were representatives of the teachers um, and the school board and everyone else, and, and it just came together quite well with surveys and everything else. So thank you to all the people who helped with that. I'd like to add my thanks as well. I sat in on some other discussions, and uh, they were feisty, to say the least, but um, productive. Uh, okay. Um, next item. Um, where the heck am I? I just. I'm sorry. I just lost that. Thank you. Consideration of superintendents' nominations of teachers to continuing contracts. Yes. Um, we have. Uh, a number of teachers who will be coming up for continuing contract. That means they have been in the system for two years. Um, at Pond Cove School, they are Julie Nickerson. And do you want a motion first, or do you? No, I okay. why don't you make the announcement? Uh, Julie Nickerson and Deborah Sampson. Uh, middle School, Rebecca Bean and Kathy Walsh. Um, at the high school, Kerry Apanovich, Ap Elaine Brassard, Karen Dyer, Rachel Guthrie, um, Erica Kent, Karen Lamb, Mary Poker Page, Kristen Thomas, Elizabeth, I don't know how to pronounce it, Melro, no. Milroy, Kristen Freve, and Maureen Messer are system wide. Um, and those are the people we are nominating for going on to continuing contract. Do I have a motion? I move that we accept the superintendent's nominations for teachers to continuing contracts. Second. Second. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? 6-0. Consideration of superintendent's nominations of teachers to second year probationary contracts. Yes, I'll go down the list here again. Um, at Pond Cove School, we have Talia Edlund, Sarah Frost, Cindy Perkins, Lynn Sped Spedinger, Spadinger, Spadinger. Uh, Amy at middle school, Amy Matthews, Melissa Sullivan, and Holly Smevak. Um, at high school, Mark Ash, William Blake, Matthew Clements, uh, Sean Garrett, Susan Garrett, Chris Hayward, Brandy LaPointe, Penny Russell, Evan Thayer, and system-wide, Karen Cronin, Deborah Hannon, and Mary Jane Call. We have a motion. <coughs> Lane. I move that we uh, recommend the superintendents, or we approve the recommendation of our superintendent for second year probationary contracts. Second. Thank you, Trish. Any discussion? I would just mention that both of these groups, um, there are some great teachers there. You saw one of them tonight. Um, many, many, you saw two of them tonight, uh, both the teacher from Pond Cove and the um, uh, doctor are, are on that list. Just some great young staff members. All those in favor? Opposed? 6-0. All right, on to new business. Consideration of the super, superintendent's recommendation to athletic fee position. Yes, uh, we have one coaching position that was not filled in our last meeting. Um, this is a spring middle school uh, coach, uh, seven and eighth grade expansion baseball. Um, the comment from Scott LeBay is that Joe is a resident of Cape Elizabeth, parent of a middle school student. He is very active in Cape youth baseball, a great teacher of the game, and his knowledge will benefit the expansion kids greatly. Um, and I am recommending him. He was the only um, 
applicant we have for the position. Do I have a motion? Elaine? I move that we accept the superintendent's <coughs> recommendation uh, for the hiring of Joe Pistachi. A second? Second. Henry? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstain? 501. Consideration of a request from the CEHS Science Club to join the North Shore Science League. We've already heard their wonderful presentation on that. Do I have a motion? I, I make, I'm sorry. You, go ahead. You need a motion before question, right? Yeah. Yes. I move that we um, approve the request for the Cape Elizabeth High School Science Club to join the North Shore Science League. We have a second. Are you seconding, Rebecca? Yeah. Okay. Rebecca seconds. Thank you. Discussion or questions? I, my one question, I went back on the co-curricular sheet, and we did fund about $900, I think, for the science. Is the amount of money that they're requesting in addition to that? Um, Jeff? Somebody? <laughs> They, they mentioned an amount of money um, as an option one or option two for either $895 or $535, and I didn't know that that was money being requested from the board. There's not a budgetary request for this. Um, they actually did spend uh, nearly all the money that uh, was right in the budget last time. So there's a little bit of money they can spend today because the government is going to be the budget as well. Okay. Let me understand this, Jeff. They have X amount of dollars left over from the current budget? It's not from the, it was from, well, the board approved an amount of a stipend for right. this year. Right, right. Uh, and I'm getting this confused. There was money that was approved by the parent association up to a certain amount of funds, so that just makes you think of this year's not as much money. They didn't spend all of that. So mm -hmm. There's some money to help out paying for some of these things for next year, and then they just pay for the balance through some funds. So at this point, the only thing is the agreed upon stipend. And, and the other question, I know we have to do some approval every time a bus leaves the state of Maine. I mean, are there insurance liability implications? Are there other things that we just need to address to make it formal? Uh, no, they would be using vans, um, and they are not um, more than 10 passenger vans, so they're, they're legal and safe to be used by schools. That's what they specified in their, their agreement. Um, and um, Pauline, the insurance on the vans, um, if they rent those? I think they would pick up the insurance from the rental company, okay. and they are listing that as a cost. OK. Thank you. Uh, to piggyback on uh, Trisha's question, how often do you expect them to be going down to Massachusetts? I, I think it's in there somewhere. We had a schedule six right? times. It's, it's every month. It's approximately once a month starting in October. October. Yeah, I think it's six, six months consecutively. For the purpose of efficiency, are we being asked to approve all six out-of-state trips at this point? So you could do it that way. Is that the understanding? That was my understanding. Does that work for everyone? Any other questions? Or? I have one question. On yes. November, they're going to CRLS. What's that? Uh, that's Cambridge Ring Region at the school in Boston. OK. If there's no other conversation um, or questions, all in favor? Opposed? 6-0. The next item is consideration of the superintendent's nominations to teaching positions for 2005-2006. Yes, um, there are two positions um, on the agenda this evening. One is uh, Susan Quirk, who is um, up for nomination, or is being nominated for a fifth grade teaching position at the middle school. And um, 
Uh, her materials were in the package. If you have other questions, I'll refer those to Nancy. And uh, the second position is Allison Gwither, um, um, up for a Spanish teacher teaching position at the high school. Um, and again, her materials are in your package, and uh, Jeff is here to answer questions if you have them. Let's begin with a motion. Anyone? Elaine? I move that we uh, accept the superintendent's recommendation for uh, Susan Quirk and Allison Wither. Um, the high school. Thank you. A second? Trish, thank you. Any discussion or questions for Bob or Jeff or Nancy? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? No. Yes, I know. <laughs> Six zero. Um, Kevin, while we're on that issue, uh, normally our meeting two weeks from now is only a workshop. I would ask for um, your indulgence if we have teacher nominations at that time rather than keep them waiting for an entire month when we might lose them to another district that we be able to bring those forward if that is acceptable. I, that is certainly acceptable so we will schedule a portion of the workshop as a special business meeting and just for the information of our current and future superintendent our practice here is that at the June meeting we approve a motion allowing the superintendent uh, to complete these things, items, and then present us with a list at the September meeting or whatever earlier meeting happens for our, you know, for formal approval. So that uh, we, we deal with that subject exactly, um, the concern over losing someone to another district. All right. Um, Mm -hmm. Consideration of superintendent's nomination for middle school principal for 2005-2006. Bob? Well, yeah. This was, um, this was a good search. It was interesting. Um, we had some good candidates. Um, we did not have as many candidates as we originally, you know, thought we would, would really want to have, but we had some good candidates in there. Um, we had initial interviews. We narrowed down to uh, a couple of candidates. Um, those two candidates went through the process, and we have the person we think should be the next middle school principal, and that is Stephen Conley. And um, we were very impressed by Steve. Um, we had feedback from all of the groups he met with, which were um, probably more people than you wanted to see and, and hear, hear about you from, but uh, um, very positive comments um, and um, the committee met, you know, after that, uh, those interviews took place. In fact, that was just before April vacation, um, met right after that and decided to uh, bring Stephen Connolly forward as our recommendee to you. Uh, the, the school committee for that position. So uh, um, our thanks to um, all the people who helped out in that process. And there were parents, there were students, there were um, teachers um, and administrators. And um, we feel very, very good about the fact that uh, we are nominating Steve Conley to be the next middle school principal. Motion. I move that we accept the superintendent's nomination of Stephen Conley as our next principal of our middle school. Second. Elaine, any discussion? Seeing none before I take this vote, I, I received a message from a former student of yours, uh, a kid named Brendan Sweeney, who, who um, <laughs> suggested to me that if I did not vote in the affirmative that uh, he might practice some of his combat techniques on my newly replaced knee. So I, I want you to know that uh, this is partially under duress. <laughs> All those in favor? Opposed? Congratulations and welcome back to Cape Elizabeth. 
Nancy, did you pay off that bet yet? That we keep hearing about? <laughs> oh, okay. I see. Okay, on to consideration of a recommendation to submit an application to the Maine Department of Education for revolving renovation funds for the high school <coughs> renovation project. Elaine, are you going to do that? Uh, yes. Um, as I mentioned before, we had discussed at the finance meeting our application to the revolving renovation. Um, Pauline has uh, worked with um, our architect and uh, broken down the project into uh, priority one, priority two, and those two priorities. And it looks like we have about a little over one million uh, that we'll be requesting at this time uh, for roof repair, ADA compliance issues, and the fire protection systems uh, as part of the high school renovation. Uh, the applications need to be sent in, and I'd like to make a motion that we approve the submission of the application as presented in our packet. Thank you, Elaine. Rebecca? I was early on my second hand. We'll go right ahead. <laughs> a second? <coughs> yes, indeed. Okay. <laughs> um, any discussion? Since I have to sign my life away on this document, I actually read it, so um, I have no objections. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? 6-0. Okay. Pauline, I trust you. I trust you. Next item, consideration of a, of a request from a teacher for a child rearing leave during the 2005-06 school year. Bob? Yes, um, this was not in your package, um, but we did have a request from Sarah Kinsella, and I'll pass those to you as we, I speak. Um, the letter was not here in time to go into your packages. Um, the letter reads, uh, I am writing to request a leave of absence from my middle school physical education position for the majority of the 2005-2006 academic year. I am due to have my first child on October 7, 2005, and would like to leave for the remainder of the school year once the baby is born. I plan to begin in August and work until the end of September, as long as my health will allow it. My husband and I would greatly appreciate the opportunity to raise our child in our home for its first year of life. Please let me know if you require any additional information regarding this request. And I do recommend that we grant these kinds of leaves. Um, the first, whatever the doctor recommends for necessary time, would be under um, sick leave. Um, if she has accumulated sick leave, the remainder would be an unpaid leave under the family um, right now. Good. I move that we approve uh, Sarah Kinsella's request for, much, uh, for child rearing leave during the 05-06 school year. Second. Rebecca, thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? All right, 6-0. And congratulations, Sarah. If you enjoy your first child the way I'm enjoying my first grandson, um, you'll have a good time. Um, consideration of a proposed trip to Europe by Community Services Group. Sue, is that you? Good evening. I'm pleased to introduce Chuck Donnelly to you. Um, we have had the good fortune of having Chuck be our Adventure Camp Director for the last 16 years. Um, he has done over 80 trips for community services. Um, some of you who have children in that 6th to 10th grade population um, probably have had the opportunity to have your child experience one of his programs. Uh, 
1988, just to give you a little bit of background on Chuck, um, I had the good fortune to meet Chuck um, as he was associated with Shawnee Peak. And we were talking about taking our kids back to Shawnee Peak. We had gone years ago, but we had been away from it for a while. And he was the director of those ski programs. And um, we sat there one evening while our kids were out skiing, and I said to him, well, what do you do in the summer? And he goes, well, I've been leading um, adventure trips for kids um, in the Blue Hill area. And um, at that time, he had some sponsors to do these trips. trips. He actually generated about $100,000 in donations to do these trips for Blue Hill kids. And I said, boy, that'd be great if we could do something like that in Cape Elizabeth. And um, we could probably even charge for the trip so we wouldn't have to go out and um, generate the revenue that you've been doing. And he said, well, our enrollments are kind of down for this summer, so maybe the first year we could offer the trips to Cape Elizabeth and we could also offer them to Blue Hill kids. And I think, what, about 90% of the kids were from Cape Elizabeth. And so that was in 1989, and Chuck has been here ever since. Um, we now have acquired all of our own uh, equipment, um, some of it by possession. Um, as he started with some stuff <coughs> over the years, we've replaced it and, and updated it. So we have all of our own adventure equipment. And each year, Chuck proposes what he thinks would be new and different for these kits. And um, every year, there's been something different. Um, probably our most um, exciting trips have been our trips to the Grand Tetons, which we have done twice. And um, in 1995, we also did uh, another European trip. So this is our second attempt at, at doing something in Europe. Um, I have Chuck here tonight who's going to tell you a little bit about the trips and um, answer any of the questions that you might have. And I have to say that our trips are probably the envy of every recreation department in New England. They keep saying, where did you find this guy? And I said, you know, it was a stroke of having a conversation with someone and connecting and knowing that this would be great for Cape Elizabeth. And um, Truck comes from a recreational background. Um, he is a main guide. He's also certified in uh, first aid and safety. And uh, he's also, also lifeguard certified. So he's got all the credentials. And um, we feel very fortunate to have him for these 16 years. And um, I hope he stays as long as I do. So um, I'm going to have Chuck sort of take you through um, the plans for the European trip. You have some of the details in your packet. And um, he actually has firmed up some other details since then. So um, he's going to tell you a little bit about the trip. And if it's approved, um, we hope to hold a parent meeting tomorrow evening. So. <laughs> Good evening. Appreciate the opportunity to tell you a little bit about this and uh, it's something that uh, I'm very excited about. Uh, when I did do it in 1994, uh, we had a group of 11 students that went over with us and uh, it was uh, really neat because I had not had a lot of European exposure at that point in time. In the interim, uh, through sales at Sunday River Ski Resort, I have been over to the United Kingdom quite a bit and I'm a lot more comfortable uh, running the trip now than I was at that point in time. But such as it was, we had a great time as we put together the uh, aspects of a cultural experience uh, with London and Paris, and yet the outdoor adventure aspects of it. And I don't think you often see that combination uh, where we can hold the interest of uh, 14 to 18 year olds from traveling to the <coughs> museum in, in uh, Paris to uh, skiing downhill in Tien or Zermatt, Switzerland. So we get that blend, and I try and keep, uh, as you'll see from the itinerary, keep it moving. This would not be the type of trip a sedate, uh, lounging around type of person wants to go on because we're moving somewhere every couple of days. But I found that for that age group, uh, that works out to be pretty good. Uh, they like to be moving, they like to be doing different things, they like to be challenged, and I think the combination of the adventure and the action is what draws some of these students into it. I'm fortunate uh, from having run the trips here in Cape Elizabeth that out of the 13 students that have uh, signed up for the trip, nine of them have been on trips with me before, uh, some for as many as five years in a row. The students age range from 14 years old to 18 years old, and some of these kids started canoeing when they were sixth graders with me. So it's nice 
at that age group to know what type of students are going with you so I know that I'm not concerned about behavioral expectations. And that adds a lot of reassurance because there's a, you know, a fair amount of responsibility, obviously, uh, moving the students around uh, from England to Paris to the Alps to Nice, uh, and we are on the go quite a bit. So uh, the trip is outlined in pretty good depth um, in the itinerary there. Uh, we do fly from Boston to London. We spend a day uh, sightseeing in London and seeing a lot of the high spots of London. Uh, we then take a train to Paris the next day, uh, spend a full day in Paris seeing all the sites there, and uh, then kind of shift gears from the cultural to the adventure. Uh, we head up into the French Alps, and uh, the last time I did that, we had a choice between mountain biking and hiking, and the trip was so beautiful, uh, the day hike that we took up in the French Alps with a picnic, that I just said, let's do the hike again, because even those that were not uh, hiking oriented really enjoyed that aspect of the trip it was one of the highlights because uh, we were really high up in the French Alps and the Alpine Meadows and everything so we'll do a day of hiking, a day of whitewater rafting and a day of skiing in the French Alps all based out of a French hostel up there. Uh, the whitewater rafting is class three so it's not as challenging as we do here in Maine uh, even on the Kennebec or the West Branch of the Penobscot uh, but they take it to a different level by kind of bouncing off rocks they call it uh, uh, kind of bumping, so it's, uh, it's a little bit of a different experience for the kids than those that have rafted here in Maine. And uh, the skiing is summer skiing up on the high glaciers, and in, uh, in France it is in Teen, and uh, we're up on the Grand Mont Glacier up there. So we ski essentially from 8 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon, then the snow starts getting soft just like it does in spring skiing around here. We then take a train down to Nice, and that's kind of our relaxed day, uh, just kind of hang out on the beach by the Mediterranean and uh, go out to dinner that night. Just kind of a sidebar, and then uh, the next night uh, we're heading back into Switzerland, up into Zermatt, and uh, going up uh, on the Gornergrat up to the Matterhorn, uh, where we spend another day um, uh, both sightseeing on the train and skiing up there, and then finally taking a train back to Paris and kind of our grand finale at dinner in Paris and going up in the Eiffel Tower at night, seeing all of Paris. Uh, fly back uh, the next day, uh, taking a train from Paris to London, and then London back to Boston. So. Uh, as I said, we're on the move, uh, but it is, uh, it is a lot of excitement for the kids, and uh, I know the kids are the ones that I know are real excited for it. So I'd be, be open to any questions we have on it. Do you need another chaperone? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have to say that that was a, a fairly uh, heavily campaigned spot, and as we have uh, uh, young ladies and gentlemen, it had to be a female chaperone, so a lot of the, the guys that were campaigning kind of got tossed out of the equation. But uh, I'm actually uh, uh, taking a, a woman who works with me at Sunday River, who's worked with me for six years, uh, who has an adolescent son, 13 years old, who's been to London uh, several times uh, in a sales capacity with me over in England, and uh, who I know is really good with teenagers. Uh, so somebody I can rely on that if I'm going one way, she's going the other. I feel real comfortable that she's got things covered. So. Other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much. I'm presuming we need to vote on this. Can I have a motion, please? Blaine? I move that we approve this trip uh, for community services to Europe in July. Second. Trish? Anything else? Seeing no questions or comments, all in favor? 6 0. Thank you. Um, and then the last item under new business is consideration of approval of the goals and objectives of the Communication Committee. Rebecca? Okay. Um, you all had this document at least for a week. Um, but it's been percolating at the committee level for months and reflects a lot of good thinking from Trish and um, the other advisory members um, from the schools. Um, the one thing that I want to make clear in, um, is that <clears throat> in most cases, the committee's expectations are not that they would be the um, implementors, but rather the facilitators or um, um, more like taking the pulse, seeing where we stand, and, and then working with the administration um, to incur. And you'll you'll notice that the wording was chosen um, to try to make clear that 
committee is not actually the implementer, but rather the, almost the cheerleader. So words like encourage, foster, promote. Um, there may be instances where the committee will be asked by administration to help out carry out some of these ideas. In particular, we've been asked already to help with um, articles for the view, um, articles for the courier, et cetera. Um, but it's, it's the committee's hope that uh, this will be a document with which all administrators can work with um, and kind of improve our overall strategy. I think we all agree that um, it's in our best interest to share our successes and also our challenges with each other and the community at large. We can only um, benefit from buy-in from all aspects of our community and this is an attempt um, to try to put that within a framework and give some very tangible strategies. So we move from the um, discussion stage to actually um, implementation and, and uh, reaching some of the goals. So I, I will make a motion um, that we approve the goals and objections, uh, objections, objectives of the communication committee. Can I have a second? Elaine? Questions, comments, discussion, and I'd like to lead with one question. Have the principals and the administrators seen this document? Um, Bob has seen this document, I've yes. Seen it, but I don't think the, uh, it, the administrative team has. Let us move on to questions and comments. Well, I've expressed this, these questions that Rebecca addressed a little bit via email to Rebecca and her committee and, and the board, but I just, I, I needed some clarification. I understand what you're saying in terms of that the committee would not, you know, specifically be responsible for this, that you're, I guess, pretty much asking the superintendent to ensure that these things happen. And it's not that I'm opposed to any of the items on here. I mean, I think that they're great, you know, they're great things and they're things that we should certainly strive for. Um, but I'm just wondering if these, you know, if some of these belong under the auspices of a school board committee. For instance, you know, on the second page, foster communication between school building staff and parents. You know, in looking at that, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure. It's, it's not that I don't believe in fostering that kind of communication, but is this, you know, is this where saying that's important belongs? And then, and, and if, in fact, it's the feeling of the board that it is. Then I'm kind of going back to the initial charge of the committee, which maybe we should think about changing. Because if we are going to have goals and objectives that are kind of at that level, then I think we might just restate. I mean, it doesn't have to be a big deal, but we might have to restate the goal of the committee. Because the original goal of the committee, when it was first established last year, was, I think, to improve and enhance communication to and from the school board. And so a, a number of the items on here are, you know, between schools, school to parent, parent to school, and so it's a, it's a different focus, and there's a lot of different levels of communication that these things are addressing. And so I think if, if tonight we're going to approve this, that we might need to, you know, restate the charge yeah. to that committee. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know because my, my feeling is that a lot of these things are going on. I mean, fostering communication between school building and parents. I mean, a lot of that is going on and that the administrators are making those things happen, you know, in their schools. And so do we need to be stating that here? Um, we, we spent a lot of time talking about that, and um, we recognize that a lot of this work is already going on. It's just it's, it's an attempt to kind of get on paper that this is an, an, an area of communication that we believe is important um, and that we recognize the work is being done. And in, in, if for some reason the work stops being done, it provides us a fr with a framework to say, um, you know, this is, this is something uh, to the superintendent, perhaps this is something that we've agreed as a board that should be should be done. Um, and could you take a look at that? Um, but you know, we're we're in a situation, a very good situation, where a lot of work is being done in this particular area. 
Um, I think where a lot of our future work is going to be focused on is more the effective communication with all stakeholders in the community. Um, but we felt like in order to be complete in terms of communication, um, we added in these other areas. And I think we would probably need to look at the charge. Um, I don't remember the specific wording that we agreed on this. I think we did go through all of the committees at the beginning of this year and came up with um, goals for each one. And I'm not sure if it changed or didn't change this, this fall. I, I think we, that we kept the goal for this committee mm -hmm. for this year. Yeah. And, and I also, I was just assuming when I saw this in our packet that the administrators had seen this. I know that there are a couple of teachers who yeah. are, you know, on the committee in an advisory capacity. But I would feel more comfortable if the administrators had had a chance to kind of, you know, see this and give feedback to the committee first before approving it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Bob has has seen a copy of it, so I'm I'm sorry. I just kind of assumed it would flow down from there. Um, I should have checked on that. <clears throat> Any other? Um, I think I provided you some vague feedback um, when I responded to your initial request, but the on, the only specific item that I have an issue with, not, an, not necessarily an issue, but a concern about, is develop the protocol for bi-directional communication between board and staff where... Um, yeah, that's encouraged, though. <laughs> that would not necessarily be the communication committee, but rather I would see the communication committee role to be to meet with the superintendent and have a discussion about this area. Um, to encourage some sort of movement forward. And if, if the superintendent and other administrators ask for any sort of input from the communication committee, then certainly we would be willing to. But it's definitely not with, I don't see that as being the job of the committee to do that. And I don't think anybody else in the committee does. So would, would you feel comfortable, Rebecca, um, asking Bob to share this oh, certainly. with the administrators and then bring it back next month? Yes, I, would, I will not be here next month, so I would ask Trish to then um, make a report to the committee. So, but yeah, that's certainly fine. I do, I do agree. I was also under the impression that this would have filtered to the at least, at the very least, the building principles. Yeah. Um, and based on that, I'd like to recommend that we table it so that that can happen. Um, we can also provide a copy to our new superintendent and our new middle school principal to take a look at as well, and then come back. I, I, don't, I don't see any huge issues here. Um, These are pretty mild. Yeah, I mean, I've, I just. I think that if we had, if they saw it and they said, yeah, we're totally comfortable with this, and then we could talk about the charge of the committee, I mean, I would, I would support it. But I would just really like to have that input. Sure. We just have it in so. Thanks. Yeah. We need to vote on the motion to table. Uh, or whatever. Motion on the table. To yeah, there is a motion. Yeah, so you need to vote. Can I have a motion to table the uh, table this pending um, conversation between the superintendent and the administrative team? So moved. Thank you. A second? Thank you, Henry. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Um, would you would you let um, if that conversation is going to happen um, before Rebecca leaves. Would you keep her in on the, the loop for that? With the administrators? The administrators? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. The next item is public comment. I don't see anybody here to make a public comment, but I would ask either Ann, Trish, or perhaps Tom 
to give us a, a down and dirty on art day tomorrow? Because that is tomorrow? It is tomorrow. Um, do you want to talk, Tom? <laughs> I, I'm just more interested in time, place, uh, that type of stuff. It begins right at the start of school, and it runs through. The kids are in three rotations. The kids, each child will um, have an, approximately an hour to a session with three different artists spanning music, art, movement, physical movement. That will run through. Do you want, should I stop? There are, what, 35 things or so? Yeah, there's about 30 to 35. Um, different artists? Different artists. A lot of them are parents in the community, so we'll send a pre-thank you to those who, and all the artists who are volunteering their time. The kids then do, through scheduling, I will, kudos to Tom, we've worked in, we corrected one glitch from last year. The kids get a recess, which we found last year was not a good thing. The heck with art, we said. They were so excited from all the artists, they needed to get out. Um, so the scheduling, um, it, we've worked into the schedule. And then beginning, I think at 1.30, there is a gesture. Alex the gesture. Alex the gesture, who will be sort of the crowning all school um, performer. So all the kids will attend simultaneously. An amazing job by uh, Suzanne McGinn and uh, Lisa Jen. It's incredible. And and for those of us who uh, haven't had children in Pond Cove for many, many years, when does this start? Last year. It no. no. Nine. Day. No. Day. What time of day does it start? Um, there'll be there'll be musicians in the lobby, including me, at at 8:20. 8:20. Yeah. Yeah, there is breakfast for the artists. So if you want to go in and pretend you're an artist, you can actually have a free breakfast. That's what I'm going to do. Maybe, maybe some of the artists can get me in on that deal. There's at least two that I know of. It's a real festival. It's great. Yeah, great. it is. OK, the next item, um, and I do know we have business under this, um, school board agenda requests. And just um, since this hasn't happened before, um, I'd like to briefly go over how at our retreat last August, we agreed that the leadership team, which is the superintendent, the chairperson, and the vice chairperson would be deciding the agenda, and everybody could ask for an agenda item um, up to um, our doing the actual agenda meeting, and if necessary, um, also, you know, sometime after that. But it was also agreed that, uh, in fairness, that if a request was denied, that the individual board member would have an opportunity to voice that request to the entire board. And we've had a request for that tonight. So I will turn this over to Rebecca for a few minutes. Right, very short. Thank you, Kevin. Um, yeah, I'm making a request that the board consider discussing um, the issue of the possibility of Dunkin' Donuts being um, put in that property in front of the high school within the context of nutrition and wellness. Um, I think that it's important for the school board to share, well, and it actually serves as a really excellent opportunity for the school board to share with the public um, some of the developments around nutrition um, within, and, and our schools. Uh, specifically the law that was signed by the president last June requiring a wellness policy to be put in place by um, local education authorities throughout the country by the start of the academic year 2006-2007 um, and various bills that are in our state legislators with, with our state legislators addressing issues such as vending machines, fitness, etc. Um, and to and, and given the seriousness with which our state um, and local governments, our federal government, our health professionals, even the CDC, um, are taking this issue of nutrition and wellness and the extent to which they're going. I, I think it's appropriate for the school board to um, talk about this issue um, and possibly um, make a statement with this kind of information and asking people in our community as a whole, um, existing and future businesses to, to keep this reality in mind, to be sensitive to it. It's not, I'm not asking for us to make a demand or a request, but rather to say, this is what our environment is, 
um, and we really could use your help. Um, I know, um, you know, we all know that good eating happens in the home, but given the way our world is today, um, I think our parents could use some help, and I think the school board is in a place where we could offer a little bit of that. So that's my request. Thank you. So, so are you requesting that we discuss this tonight and <clears throat> or that um, we have it on an agenda at some point? Yeah, yes. I would possibly maybe, uh, I'm not going to be here in June, so I would ask maybe if it could be included in our um, next workshop. Um, well, I, I think the process that we agreed upon was that a, um, a request could be made as to whether or not this should be placed on the agenda. And I am taking the request as a motion. Um, and I think that, requ that request needs a second. And the amount of time that I would be willing, having discussed this on numerous occasions, um, I would limit the conversation on this tonight and make a decision and get it get it resolved. If that's um, if my understanding is consistent with your understanding of what we agreed to do back last August on these items. I don't know. Did we stip? I mean, did we really say what exactly? Like, you make the request and it has to be discussed that night, or it's sort of like you can make a request and then decide whether it goes on. When it, whether it goes on, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to go on tonight. No. It doesn't go on tonight. No. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said that it you wanted to discuss decision it tonight. Whether or not it's, a, it's a board agenda. decision as to whether or not it goes on the yeah, agenda. So right. that's the decision. I, I'm sorry, I thought you said you wanted to discuss it tonight. Only whether or not. It gets on the agenda. Okay, I'm sorry. So again, um, I'm, I'm uh, accepting what Rebecca has said is uh, a move to request that this item be included on a future agenda. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right. Any quick comments on that one way or the other? Yeah, I just want to understand. You mentioned a couple points. Mm -hmm. Communicating nutrition information, I, you know, agree with. I think that that's our job. There's a lot going on in that arena. I guess I'm a little fuzzy about what, what is the expected outcome of the, the discussion? Is there a goal or is it to discuss new school nutrition related to the school? I guess I'm, I'm just unclear as to what the, sort of the purpose of that agenda item would be. And if the school board, just so that I can in my mind determine whether or not that's really a school board discussion, irregardless of what my personal thoughts are on the topic. Um, yeah, it's, it's more an effort to um, share with our community, and that includes everyone, including businesses, new and old, about the, what, what the school board and the schools are being asked to do in our, in our community. Um, and that if, and, and, and therefore, can they please try to be supportive? That's all. That's it. Okay, so that's different than bringing Dunkin' Donuts into the discussion. No, it just serves as a, it's, it serves, it served as a kind of drop coming off point for me. I just, I just want to explain why, why it was that I started thinking about this. Why is it that I'm asking for this now? Um, because certainly something within 200 feet of our high school, um, and we're putting in a nutrition policy, and we're going to be having these meetings, certain mandates, seems a little... Um, Contrary, um, we cannot we cannot say you can't go in there because of our mandates, and I'm not suggesting that. But what I am suggesting is that at this point in time, we just let people know this is this is what we're being expected to do, and everybody in our town, whether it's parents or business owners or um, elected officials, if we could keep that in mind as we move forward in our plans, whatever they may be, and to be supportive of that. 
that's that's the intent okay so i'm still unclear on what the motion is i could support that i don't know that i want it it's if dunkin donuts is tied into that i'm just a little no. i don't know what i'm voting on yet yeah. it it has it is not going to be directed to dunkin donuts so i'll not mention dunkin donuts it is about this is what the environment is and could we just keep that in mind um, as a community okay thank you for clarification since this has been seconded rebecca is well aware that i oppose any discussion of dunkin donuts per se by the school board as spinning all wheels in an arena where we have no say. This is a uh, town council planning board issue. Um, and even the proposed use of our dry high school driveway is not fall under the purview of the school board other than as a courtesy. Um, my sense is we have bigger fish to fry, and this is not something that I would care to spend a lot of time on when the reality is we have uh, no control over this whatsoever. Um, we can certainly express our opinions um, individually, but again, it falls under the uh, purview of the Planning Board and Council. Um, and I just, again, don't see the purpose of getting involved other than as individual citizens. And therefore, I am going to oppose um, adding this to an agenda. You know, as far as the <coughs> driveway, even though the town council may make a decision, the ultimate decision is going to be up to the Department of Transportation and they'll rule the thing. So it's really almost new. But you're kind of looking at this as a as an advocacy stand, taking a uh, sort of taking a stand about general nutrition, and I don't know. Well, I mean, you're seeing this. It's, it's not, not even that you think anything can happen or can come out of this. You're wanting sort of a statement from the board about. Well, I mean, that was what. Well, what I happened. what I would hope to have happen is that it starts to become people start to become aware of what is being expected of the schools within this area. Um, and, and, and the extent to which the state and federal governments are getting serious about this issue, and that if, if we, as a, as a town and as a school board, agree with that, that we come together on this as a community in, in, in understanding and support, that's, that's what I'm saying. Any further comments or questions? I'll call the motion then. All those in favor of adding this to a future agenda? Opposed? Well, I guess we'll be adding it to a future agenda. Announcement of upcoming meetings. Um, School board workshop and brief business meeting Tuesday, May 24th, 2005. School board policy subcommittee meeting Tuesday, June 7th. Finance subcommittee meeting June 14th. Regular school board meeting um, followed by the regular school board meeting at 7.30 in council chambers. The last item before we adjourn the public meeting is Personnel committee is 9.30 a.m. this Thursday morning. Personnel committee or negotiations? Personnel committee, I believe. To discuss all of the personnel who are not, <laughs> who are not under uh, contract. Okay. I think we called it as personnel. I, I, I did not know about that meeting. I cannot come. Um, <laughs> which, which could be a problem if I'm now the chair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll reschedule. Okay. <laughs> okay. Last item. Consideration of the superintendent's request to enter executive session to discuss negotiations 
with the Cape Elizabeth Educational Administrators Association as provided by 1 MRSA 4056D. Um, somebody can translate that correctly, Louise, for me in the uh, record of this meeting. And with that, um, we're adjourned. Thank you.